Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about David Wright and lumbar spinal stenosis. He actually had spinal stenosis in his cervical, in his neck, and his lower back apparently. I don't know a lot about his case, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about what he probably was experiencing and what lumbar stenosis is. Specifically, we're going to talk about lower lumbar stenosis. Okay, um, let's go through our thing here. So, this is a uh, the lower lumbar. When we talk about lumbar stenosis, we're just talking about the lower area right here. This part of the spine is called the lumbar. We have the thoracic and we have the cervical, okay? Um, he did have some problems up in this area, but we're gonna talk about this area just for an example's sake. Um, stenosis basically, when you talk about medical stenosis, whatever, is basically a narrowing of a vessel or an area of the body, okay? And that narrowing can cause problems for blood flow, let's say in your heart, and it can cause, let's say, a heart attack or have some problems for blood get reaching a muscle. In the cases of lumbar stenosis, we're talking about nerves that are being compressed because of a narrowing of an area where the nerve is passing or the spinal cord, okay? So let's take a look at this a little bit here. So. Um, this is the lower lumbar spine right here. They're just depicting, these are the vertebral bodies, okay? Uh, these are the disc segments in between. We always hear about disc problems and all that. Um, one of the areas that we talk about where the nerve exits, it's called the, uh, the foramen, the intervertebral foramen. It doesn't really matter the name. When we most commonly talk about stenosis, this area right here where the nerves are exiting the spine are the ones that we're talking about most often. Um, it's actually often on both sides. So the nerves come off the lumbar spine on this side and this side. And um, a lot of times people with stenosis will have symptoms, tingling, numbness, sometimes even weakness and balance problems that extend down into the legs, okay? Uh, not all the time, sometimes it can be off and on. Uh, most times you feel it, you'll notice it with just standing in one position for a while, especially standing more upright, not leaning forward. Uh, and also when you're walking, uh, you tend to have a lot of this problems with stenosis. Um, with people with stenosis, some of it is very much congenital. It's something that they've, excuse me, a genetic, they've had it, their family has had it. Um, <clears throat> in the cases of David Wright, he's had some, someone that's diagnosed very rare, rarely as someone of his age, I think in his late 30s, mid 30s, his late 30s, he is very young to have this type of condition, you know. But anyway, another thing too, so just so you understand, so we have the nerves exiting this area right here on the side, okay. Um, if you look for, if I went ahead and I did a cross view of my body here, and I crossed through the spine right here, this would basically, if I took a section here, this would be our spinal cord. So this right here is the vertebral segment. This portion is the bone, that's the front. Um, this is the area in the center where the spinal cord is. This is depicting the spinal cord. Off the spinal cord, you have nerves that come off either side that go down your leg, okay? So in some cases, this area is narrowed um, with, it could be bony formation, you can have a little spur here, okay? You can also have the disc that rests between these segments here, it can also rest and you can have a bulge that causes stenosis. The one that we're talking about with David Wright is most likely related to the fact that these discs aren't so much herniated as they're actually decreased height of these discs right here, okay? And that decreased height causes a narrowing for where this nerve comes out. So we decrease the height between these two bones, this disc, which is kind of water, it's got a lot of water content. As it degenerates and, and it causes problems, it actually drops down in height. As it drops down in height, there's less room for these nerve roots to exit through. So that's the more foraminal stenosis. There's also, if there's a narrowing, and this is more just how your body's made, there can be also a central canal stenosis where it can actually impinge on the actual spinal cord, a lot more serious, but more rare too. It's actually more common in the thoracic region to have that type of stenosis. So what movements and positions really bother someone with stenosis um, besides standing and walking? Um, let's take a step back, Kathy. So if you're swinging a bat or you're coming up for a ball, that excessive repetitive extension can cause some problems uh, for, you know, for anyone. And the professional athletes, what happens is their stenosis is going to be amplified by the fact that they've got such high demands. They're doing something highly physical, repetitive over time. Even the batting positions, you're coming across and you're coming through the bat and you're taking your back through that repetitive, that arching motion right there. That is really something that, that can be provocative. And what happens is when you do arch, if, you just, if you're just standing here normally, people with stenosis have a narrowing. But when they arch, and they come back, these nerve roots have even less room to function, okay? 
and other joints get compressed and, and, and irritated and can cause some of those leg symptoms. So you can imagine a very, you know, um, a, a swing, a repetitive swing like that, a very physical motion in addition to running upright and arching, what that causes over time. So I hope, I hope David Wright, I hope he's better um, by just retiring. It's sad, it's sad that he had to retire for that. <clears throat> but if the trigger was truly that aggressive, heavy duty, um, you know, high level sports that was causing it, he may be able to function a little bit better with, you know, with basically getting out of the sport. You know, that is that might be his trigger. It may not be. He may be at the point where he really needs more interventions. Um, spinal injections, typically for classic stenosis, the research shows it's probably not going to be that helpful. Um, in some cases, they'll actually, for surgery, will actually open up this space. They'll surgically go in here and shave the bone. And uh, some people refer to it as a rotor rooter or surgeons call it that. I don't call it that. And it'll open up that space, open up the bone spur, shave the disc, and kind of open up the area so there's more room for it. Um, but anyway, that's something with stenosis. It's just something just to keep in mind. It's an unfortunate case of a young player um, that or a young individual that got it. You really hear about this more like 60s, 70s. Um, if you have someone that has stenosis and MRI is younger, Sometimes that's not even the origin of their pain, it's just some slight changes on it. It also matters degree like anything in life. Um, it's mild, moderate, or severe. Um, um, that, can, that can cause problems you know, earlier in life, but it's more common in that plus 60 range. In 50s are even a little bit young, but 60s, 70s range, that's where the lumbar stenosis is a problem. So interesting case, an unfortunate case with David Wright. Um, there are things for physical therapy that sometimes can help you in cases where you don't have um, you know, really severe sp uh, spinal stenosis. Um, at which we've talked about on some previous videos. So anyway, I hope this helps you out, and I hope David Wright feels a little bit better um, um, getting out of the sport, and hopefully he can live life and do enough that he can remain functional. So anyway, we wish you well, and uh, anyway, hope a little tidbit for the day. Have a great one.